In chapter one, we will uh, zoom in on uh, the European interoperability framework. Um, important for this chapter is that the interoperability is not only looking to uh, technological aspects, the semantic and technical aspects, but also takes into account legal and organizational interoperability. Um, in the ISA Square program, which is also responsible for developing this and maintaining this European interoperability framework, uh, uh, the interoperability is uh, defined as the ability of organizations to interact between each other, um, to share information and knowledge between them through the business processes they support. So, uh, and what is practically happening is that they exchange data between the ICT uh, systems or the IT systems. So that is the formal uh, definition of uh, what is interoperability in the context of the European uh, IF, uh, European interoperability framework. Um, IF is based on a series of principles uh, that are then uh, translated in a series of recommendations. So there are 12 key principles. Um, we will not discuss them in detail, but it's important to mention them. Uh, first of all, uh, the first principle is that the IVE, the European Interoperability Framework and uh, activities there rely on what is happening in the member states. So subsidiarity and proportionality is an important uh, principle because the uh, EU level does not want to reinvent uh, things at European level, but built upon components and experiences and best practices in the member states and also at regional, so at subnational level. Then there are a series of uh, principles that are important um, and that are the basis for the different components and solutions developed. It's the fact that uh, it should be open transparent and reusable, especially the reusability is very important in order to avoid duplication of efforts or the construction or the development of similar solutions that do more or less the same. So uh, the reusability of components and solutions is very important. And that all from a technical speaking, neutral uh, perspective, and the fact that also the data should be portable. So uh, to avoid uh, lock-in for particular solutions. So it's rather uh, the choice of certain standards, ways of working rather than specific solutions that are uh, specific to a particular company. So technological neutrality is very important. And then there are a, a series of uh, principles that are uh, uh, taking into account this uh, user perspective. So all the developments, all the tools, all the applications uh, and the building blocks should be uh, uh, based on user needs. Uh, so user centricity, also usability of solutions is an important keyword there, uh, is important. And that also taking into account inclusion and accessibility. Um, taking into, uh, into account, for example, the fact that some people have maybe some restrictions to use computers. So all these elements should be taken into account, but also taking into account privacy issues, security, secure access to data, so that not everything is accessible to everyone, so that there is a whole logic system in it to protect where necessary particular information. Uh, not only English spoken uh, solutions, uh, but multilingualism is also important in the context of Europe, of course. And then the last three principles relate to uh, the fact that administrative simplification should be one of the drivers. Um, and also that in the long term, uh, information should be preserved, uh, maybe to, through archive systems, etc. And that throughout the whole implementation of solutions, uh, there is continuous assessment, evaluation, monitoring of the effectiveness and the efficiency. 
And so these 12 principles uh, are then more detailed in these 19 recommendations. Uh, IF consists of uh, uh, four layers and one cross-cutting layer. Uh, so uh, there are four interoperability layers, the legal, organizational, semantic, and technical one. The whole interoperability solution and approach is governed. Uh, so there is an interoperability governance put in place at the EU level together with the member states. And this cross-cutting is focusing on uh, public service governance that rely, of course, on the four uh, interoperability layers. The legal layer uh, looks into alignment of legislation and policies. Um, the legislation and policy should be clear, coherent, and think and embed already how digital technologies can be used. Uh, the organizational uh, uh, interoperability layer looks into simplification of processes by public administrations and uh, listening and integration of needs from businesses and citizens. So there should be mechanisms in place uh, to guarantee that. Uh, semantic interoperability focus that uh, on the data, uh, that the data are structured and documented in such a way, and also that there are common agreed formats so that the data are exchangeable and can talk to each other. Uh, and then the technical uh, interoperability is rather about sharing and reuse of infrastructures and services and IT systems, so the different technical components. So the machines should be able to talk to each other too. Um, IFE has uh, set up uh, a set of what is called IFE solutions. Um, it's not only technical components, but it's, let's say, a comprehensive set of methods, tools, best practices uh, that are well documented and then shared uh, within the EU amongst member states, with the regions, subnational level, etc. Uh, first, there is the European Interoperability Reference Architecture. Uh, which is kind of component-based mechanism to define and design uh, uh, IFE solutions. So it's, let's say, allows to uh, build with certain existing building blocks, your own architecture. Um, there is also a way with the cartography tool to uh, map what you have already in your region or in the member state with the European solution. So to see where are the gaps and how you can match better. On join up, uh, all the solutions are documented in a, uh, in a, in a catalog, um, user friendly and developers and member states can use and reuse that to build new public services. Uh, there is also a mechanism which is called the interoperability maturity model, which is a kind of assessment tool to see where you are on, on the ladder of uh, maturity um, and interoperability. So that allows you to monitor your own implementations. Then you have the uh, National Interoperability Framework Observatory that is monitoring what is happening really in the member states, what is developments, good solutions, best practices. So through fact sheets, uh, well-documented and online available for all uh, participants. And of course, you have a full sharing and reuse framework uh, uh, where uh, IT solutions are jointly developed and shared. So, uh, for example, through solutions in code on GitHub, etc. So these are the solutions. Uh, these solutions are then made more operational through the IFE toolbox. Uh, just a few examples because there are many uh, uh, tools in the toolbox and they are very variable. Uh, one example is um, the developed TCAT application profile for uh, creating metadata for European data portals. Um, there is also a, a similar one on metadata ADMS. So uh, around the metadata, a lot of activities are ongoing and also, by the way, a particular efforts for the geospatial or the location domain. Uh, other uh, uh, elements in the toolbox are uh, EID, e-invoicing, e-signature, et cetera, et cetera. 
So providing uh, generic building blocks that all member states, all regions, all public authorities need, uh, and that can be reused uh, at a country level. Uh, other examples of uh, in the toolbox are the vocabularies, the core vocabularies, which are common languages. Uh, there are there is one on location as well. There is one on public service. There is one on how you define or collect information on on citizens, on businesses, etc. So core vocabularies are common languages to be used and reused by all public authorities. And then you have different platforms and specific tools like join up, but also EU survey to conduct surveys, etc. Instead of having the, your own tools, you can rely on these European tools from the toolbox. Um, so there is a lot in there. Um, and we will also have a few examples of specific uh, tools related to location in the next chapter. Uh, this chapter will be ended by these interoperability challenges from the different perspectives. Uh, you have different uh, technical barriers, semantic barriers, uh, organizational legal barriers. Uh, you can come up with uh, simple examples. For example, like if one example is on the technical interoperability where tracks do not match at borders, for example, with trains, it's not so long ago that you have, when you traveled from France by train to Italy, you have to change trains because the tracks did not match. So you had no uh, interoperability, technically speaking, across the border. And AIF, what AIF is doing is to provide, you can use the solutions in the context of ICT, then of course, the track problem has been solved a long time ago, to uh, solve certain uh, barriers that exist and to make exchange of data and information between authorities uh, more flexible, more fluent. Uh, and the same happens uh, at the legal level where there are uh, contradicting directives, uh, collecting similar data in different ways, for example. Um, other are these organizational uh, uh, challenges where uh, you have maybe very complex settings and processes that are really not aligned and matching uh, very well. So there are these challenges and the is that the toolboxes, the, the solutions offered by AIF are used to build solutions that overcome these barriers. So what you have learned in this chapter is that interoperability, uh, if you in its essence is about connecting organization, people and computers. Uh, so it's uh, content, it's people and organizations, but also the technology, of course. The European Interoperability Framework provides the principles, also some solutions, uh, components is uh, like Lego blocks and particular specific tools to help member states and service providers to build uh, interoperable uh, public services, which we will discuss in other modules. And with that, this chapter uh, is closed.